Hi everybody, welcome to EcoDriver. My name is Helmut. Today we do our EcoDriver loop with the Audi Q4 e-tron 50 Quattro. This is a special car as it's not from a dealer but from one of my subscribers. Guntram made the whole way from Munich to Innsbruck around 100 miles, 160 kilometers to get out with me today to find out how efficient this brand new car you see here, 554 kilometers on the clock, can be driven. Guntram is sitting next to me and whenever I talk PS, he just jumps in. Let's have a look at the car. Peak power output 220 kilowatts, four wheel drive, 460 newton meters peak torque. Battery is 82 kilowatt hours gross, 76.6 kilowatt hours net, unladen weight 2288 kilograms, 5034 pounds. I guess with the two of us it's probably two and a half tons. No offense, Guntram. I guess it's more me than you. <laughs> Um, WLTP is 18.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, but this includes charging losses. And we have 150 kilowatts of braking power, which is also rather important. If you are new to this channel, uh, we do a loop and I show it to you here. It's around 75 kilometers long, 46 miles. Once we left the city limits behind us, it starts with an uphill section of around 6 kilometers, 4 miles, followed by 6 kilometers of rolling hills, 6 kilometers of descent which brings us back to our starting altitude and there we already get an idea of where we will end up consumption wise. 19 kilometers of open road, 17 kilometers of motorway and 17 kilometers, 11 miles of city traffic follow. And then we have finished this loop. After every section we check the overall and sectoral consumption and at the end we analyze the whole trip. The cameras will be on all the time to show how I am driving and to show that there is no need to go slow or extra careful to achieve a good consumption and therefore a good range in an EV. I hope you enjoy the good weather, the scenery, the car and our company. See you later. We are coming to the end of the climb, 44.9 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Very positive here is that the so-called intelligent recuperation can be completely deactivated. This will change the region depending on set of data, speed limits, other traffic and so on. And don't get me wrong, safety wise that's a great feature. But when it comes to driving efficiently those systems don't do any good. A good driver is way more efficient than those systems are, at least at the moment as the driver just can process more information at much shorter time period and also might have information the system doesn't have. We are coming to the hills now and there it's important to use the constant change of gradient to amend the speed using the momentum from going down into the next ascent or to cover a flat bit just with the kinetic energy stored, just like a roller coaster. Now we are coming to the end of the hills and we see here 31.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. As expected, it was working really well making use of the no region to cruise from one hill to the next. That's how I love EV driving, plus it saves a lot of energy. 
As for the descent, it should be possible to go all the way down without using the accelerator, provided there is no other slow and inefficient traffic preventing us from doing so. There are two flat bits and we should be able to cross them just with enough momentum. Thirteen point nine kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers at the end of the descent. Wow, that's really low. Didn't expect that. Considering the weight of this car, over two point two tons, that's really impressive. Keep in mind that also on descents you can be more or less efficient, just like in the flat, uphill, or in the city. Try to avoid using energy if gravity or kinetic energy can be used. At the end of the open road, we see here 13.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Consumption still looks good. My goal for this trip before we started was to stay below 15 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which looks likely now. Coming on to the motorway, uh, and here there is a restriction of 100 kilometers per hour, 62 miles per hour on this section. However, EVs are allowed to go 130. Uh, normally, I stick to the 100, firstly for comparison reasons. Secondly, for efficiency. Thirdly, most of the time the traffic here is so heavy anyway, it wouldn't make even sense to try to go faster. And the time you would gain would be minimal. At the end of the motorway, we see 14.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. We're coming to the city now. Here it's important to keep the vehicle in motion and avoid braking as much as possible. But this is an EV, you recuperate energy. Yes, it is. But only roughly around 40 to 45% in the best case. So you never get back what you have invested before or have to invest afterwards. So braking is always a waste of energy, even in an EV. Talking about regen, if you want to know how much this car really regenerates, then I recommend the second video with this uh, car. I will put the link in the description box below and also at the end of this video. In this video, I have tested uh, the mounting consumption and the real life recuperation. If you want to know more about the difference in driving styles with less or more regen, I've done videos where I've tested uh, what's more efficient 
I did this with the Kia EV6 for this channel and if you're interested in that, I also put the link below. Let's do a quick update here. We are on 14.2 kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers. You may have noticed that the camera on the dashboard stopped working for a couple of minutes. This is because uh, it was so interesting to chat with Guntram that, uh, that I forgot to change the battery, <laughs> which is what I have to do with this GoPro. You see the traffic light ahead, it's red. So I'm approaching it a bit slower, hoping that it turns green soon, which it does now. And now we can avoid further braking and keep our momentum. Coming to the end of our trip with Guntram's Audi Q4 e-tron 50 Quattro. So let's look for a parking spot here. Mm, nothing big enough, so let's stop over here. And here we see 14.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer. And many thanks to Guntram for allowing me to do this with his car. Ich danke dir fürs Mitfahren. Es ist faszinierend, mal da richtig lernen zu können, was, was effizientes Fahren yeah. betrifft. Also unglaublich faszinierend. Super, yeah. gratuliere. Danke. Okay, thank you very much. That's really nice. And now let's have a look at the details. Well, that was a nice trip with the Audi. Uh, you see here the sectoral and overall consumption of this trip with the Q4 e-tron Quattro and overall 14.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers according to a board computer. I know charging glasses and maybe not 100% accuracy, but still 14.1, chapeau, Audi. And they seem to have done a really good job here with this setup. And if you look at the table with uh, the overview of all the cars I've tested so far, we see that of those cars only the Hyundai Kona and one other car I've tested for my German channel already are ahead of the Q4 when it comes to weight specific consumption. I have to say I was never and am not an Audi fan but this car really deserves praise. They have done a very good job here. Uh, you see uh, weight specific consumption that's the column on the far right uh, this sets the consumption 
per 100 kilometers in relation to the weight of the car. And with an EV, that's one of the uh, biggest factors for consumption as uh, those vehicles are very, or those drivetrains are very efficient and therefore every external factor has a much bigger influence on the overall consumption as does driving style. So we see here uh, there's one car uh, ahead which I haven't shown yet on this channel but I've already done from a German channel and this video will come within the next I guess two weeks. Uh, we had the Hyundai Kona and uh, and very closely behind it the Audi Q4 e-tron Quattro and what I see here is the the downhill weight specific consumption is very good it's the best so far that indicates that this car is very good at recuperating and talking about recuperation uh, I have done a second test with this car and if you want to see how this car performed on the mountain consumption and on the region test uh, I put this video up here and if you generally interested in this topic feel free to subscribe this channel and if you hit the notification bell you won't miss any new video that's been it for the Q4 e-tron Quattro thanks for watching take care and see you next time